Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a slightly different operation on the Power Hammer versus Press series. We are going to be taking these two one inch round bars and they're roughly about nine inches long. As you can see one is longer than the other. This isn't a competition on how far we can draw this out and you'll see that here in a second as soon as we get to hammering on these. Like in the other video, I did the power hammer first, and so that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. First key is we're using the same gas forge as we used in the previous video. And as you can see, I like to get my material really nice and hot. I believe this is key with any sort of equipment. And then here's our first heat. This is one inch round bar, and this is my 37 pound ram, mechanical helve hammer, power hammer built, designed and built by myself. As you can see what I'm working on first is I'm actually working on the tip of the bar, where it will cool down the quickest, and then working on the rest of the mass of the bar, tapering it out. In this video, I'm going to be doing two heats. I will be doing one heat, where I show you the power hammer here, on this very first drawing out, and then a second heat, after I show you how it looks on the press, to continue drawing out the material. And then we will compare the two at the end of this video. So make sure you stick around. Or for those of you with short attention spans, you can skip to the end of this video. So as you can see, I'm working into the last bit of my heat and drawing down a fairly nice and even taper. Once again, sorry about the jarry video footage here. Uh, this is just a product of the tripod sitting on my shop floor. Under my power hammer, there is a rubber pad to insulate the concrete from the hammer, but as you can tell, it still has quite a bit of thump to it. So we're almost here at the end of this heat, and here's the first result of that. Now we're on to the press. In the press, I have some one-inch fullering dies, and just to be fair, the press does, I need a little bit of work on my dies to create my dies to be a little stronger. This pet press, when I created it, it actually started as a completely different type of press to begin with. And then I had to convert it into an H-frame press versus a C-frame press. I chose the wrong material to build it with, which I built it with I-beams. And so there's a lot of goofy things going on about this press. And most likely when I'm done using it and I redesign another press, I'll probably just scrap this one. It was a good learning experience. Uh, a very dangerous learning experience. As presses are dealing with tons of pressure. And you have to be real careful. And there was the result of that. Now we're back to the power hammer with the other bar and we're going to continue drawing this out. If you noticed in the press video, the only thing that we were able to do was really squeeze a bunch of fuller marks or lumps into the material. Now granted, if you had shallower radius dies, it wouldn't have been as severe of fuller marks. But I feel that a press is very hard to control when you're drawing material out. As where you can see in this example, the power hammer, this is where the power hammer really shines in my opinion. But we're going to leave that to you guys and gals out there to, to decide which one you think won this video. I would like this series to be about helping people 
find out what tool was right for them versus just me interjecting my opinion on it. I am fortunate enough to be to have worked hard enough and designed and built these hammers and my own presses and things like that myself. I have find myself very fortunate. And so therefore I have both in my shop. A lot of guys this isn't an option for them and they really only have a choice they can build you know, a press or a power hammer. They have just enough money for either or. And so hopefully this will this little series I'm doing will take and help with that kind of decision making process for you guys and gals out there. One thing I will point out in this video, I'm starting the process of rounding up the material. There's a long way to go. There would be a third heat on this to try to round up this material. But I want you to take note of how even the taper is and that you can pretty much bring this taper to a round cross section again. This is another shortcoming of the press. Unless you have a proper die underneath it, there is no way of converting it into a nice even round taper again. So here we are, we're just kind of planishing it off a little bit better. Truth be told, I could have probably edited this last little bit out, but I want it to be true to real time when I stopped hammering to when I started hammering. In this picture you can see that I had to take off the fullering dies to go back to my flat forging dies to press this out and press out all those little mountains into the valleys. As you can see I'm working out those lumps there. It doesn't do much good to try to pull a taper on flat dies. It just kind of stops. It doesn't really squish it too much. Presses are pretty static in that nature. You don't have a lot of control as far as variability of the pressure. Now one thing I think you'll notice at the end of this video here is that a press makes a really great tool if you are resizing material. And I use my press a lot for this operation. A press is a great tool if you want to put some kiss blocks in on it and say you have something that is, you know, one inch round and you want some three quarter inch square bar you can press that one inch round into three quarter square bar pretty quick and easy with a press. As where with kiss blocks on a power hammer, it's it's doable, but it's just not as accurate. You can't obtain the same degree of accuracy that you can with a press. So here you can see I'm trying to try to round up some of these corners and just by the nature, part of it, it's being too cold, but just by the nature of a press itself, it wants to kick it off to one side or the other or go the path of least resistance, which is back to the flats. So I pretty much gave up on that ideal. And we're about to be to the result. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. If you didn't, that's cool too. You can always let me in the, know in the comment section down below. So here's the result. As you can see, there's a pretty clear difference in the two different types of tapers obtainable. That's it for today. Thank you all for watching. God bless.